Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be covering the topic of raised flooring, also known as raised floors or access flooring or something like that, there are numerous uh, names for it, but basically the, the idea is that you have some sort of a floor that's raised above the main structural part of the floor, usually this would be a concrete slab or something like that, and then you have some structural columns, things like that, just small structural columns that are holding in individual portions or parts of the floor structure or the raised floor structure. Now the reason you might want to have something like this in your buildings is because you want to have some sort of a mechanical or electrical installations that would be running underneath your floor and then so you basically have this a little part beneath the structural part of the floor and the raised flooring where you can hide all of those elements. Now the tricky part about that in Revit is that there is, isn't really a tool within Revit that covers that but I found a way how to create raised flooring within Revit and, and actually a good fast way and easy way to create raised flooring so that's what I'm going to be covering within this tutorial. But before we get into that I would just like to uh, ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and everything and also if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials and also I do one advanced Balkan Architect Revit course. Now all of these courses are over one hour long. I have over 30 of them so far and you can find them on my my Patreon first link in the description of this video so check it out if that's something you're interested in. Also there you can find all of my advanced Balkan architect files, all of the project files, everything. So if you need some of that first link in the description. Okay with that out of the way let's get into the tutorial. So let me just switch here to my uh, to my computer screen and as you can see over here we have some sort of a I don't know how would you call it uh, some sort of a declaration or uh, in project information about raised flooring. So basically this is a company that does raised floors and they have a raised floor family. Now, usually for families, you would just go here to insert and then load them in. Now, floors being a system family, you can't really load them into the project. They either need to be part of your template, or if they're not, like in most cases with raised floors, because you probably don't have them in your template, you would have to copy them from a different project into your own project, and then you can use them. So let's say we have a new project, which I'm going to create now. I'm just going to go here to file, new project, Project and okay, let's cancel out of this. Okay, I'm going to go with the regular like architectural template hit OK and there we go here we have a new project so I'm going to go back to this file and this file will be available on my patreon multiple files but you can find some uh, something like this uh, on some of those websites for downloading uh, Revit families if you don't know those websites I have a video on that so check it out so okay so here we have this floor and let's say I want to use this one so I'm just going to go like this and just grab all of these elements now when we grab them it's going to say 27 common so basically you have 27 different types of elements. We've got some floors, we've got some uh, text, we have some floors, some columns and something uh, that's uh, along common. So let's load all of this in. So what I'm going to do is just uh, uh, go with Control c to copy, then hit escape a few times, go to my project, the new project, and just go here Control v and paste it here. Okay, so now once you have pasted all of this, you can hit here finish just to make sure that you've finished the copying and pasting. Now you can select all of this and delete it. Now the point of this whole practice of copying and pasting is the fact that now you have the, this floor and all of the elements that go along with it uh, inside of your Revit project and you can use it. So if I just go here to floors, and if I open up the drop menu, uh, here we have our regular floors that come with this template, but here, uh, the this one over here, the second to last one, is a uh, linder uh, floor, and that's the one that we're going to be using. So basically, it's like any other floor. Let's just go with a simple rectangle and place it over here. Let's zoom in a little bit, hit finish, and there we go. Now, the only difference from a regular floor is the fact that it has these separations. They're kind of like ceiling separations they work in a similar way so I, let me just kind of resize it just a little bit so I don't have those uh, kind of uh, little parts at the end okay I think this looks a bit better let's move this in a bit there we go I think this looks a bit cleaner now 
Okay, so finally we, we have this floor. Now we have to host it on another floor. So what I like to do is just go here to floor uh, and then you can create a new floor below it. Now before we can do that, what I like to do is go to one of the elevations. In this case, let's go to south elevation and let's create a new level. So let's just go here to level and this level is going to be underneath this one and the distance from it we can do it let's go at I don't know 300 millimeters it doesn't have to be that that uh, far below and then uh, here because this looks like a mess I'm just going to go here and add an elbow and maybe fix this a little bit okay there we go now, uh, here also one more thing that I like to do, uh, we have to have some sort of a uh, floor underneath. So for that, let's go back into level one. Let's go to floor and let's go with a generic 150 millimeter one. Let's say that's a concrete wall and let's go with a rectangle. Now here for the host level, let's go not to level two, let's go to level three. That's the one that we've just created below. And let's just do a rectangle like this hit finish and there we go. Now if we go to south elevation as you can see here's our structural floor and here's our raised floor. Now we need to add those structural elements that are holding our raised floor in place. Uh, now to do so I, I like to go here with a measure tool and just measure from the lower floor up to the bottom of this top floor and in this case it's 261 millimeters so that means that our raised floor has an offset, a top offset or a thickness of 39 millimeters. Now that's the important part. So remember that 39 millimeter offset on top here because of this floor. Okay, let's go back into level one and uh, or you can even go into level three if you want. And uh, what I'm going to do now is just go here to column. And uh, one important thing, if you go here to column, it's going to say structural column. You have to open up the drop menu and now you can get the option for architectural column. So that's the important part that you should uh, kind of consider. Okay, so I'm going to go here to column and just make sure you go with architectural because that's where we have this, uh, this structural uh, pedestal, 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 I think that's the right pronunciation, pedestal a column that's actually holding our floor in place. So it's categorized as a column, so you just select it here. Uh, now what you need to do is to place it. So uh, because we're going from level three, let's go up to uh, level, uh, level one. There we go. And now we can place it. Now notice if I want to place it here, it's not going to snap to any of these intersections. So what you need to do is just place it like this. Now you need to select it. Okay, it's selected. Go to move, find its midpoint, and now you can snap it to the intersection. So I guess that's the like the the, the difficult part, and it's kind of hard to center it. So you have to move it again, just to make sure that it's centered. But once it's centered, it's going to be a bit easier. Now here for the top level, uh, we have the option for a top level offset, and let's type in minus 39 millimeters because that's that little offset that we have. Now unfortunately, we can't see our uh, pedestal anymore. So what they like to do is just select our raised floor, right click, go to override graphics and view by element and then you can give it a bit of transparency and now you can see that pedestal underneath. Okay, now to copy it, you can either copy it or you can use an array. What they like to do first is to go to copy, then go to midpoint and then copy it all along this side. Make sure just that multiple is selected and then uh, just go over these edges where we don't really want to use an array. We just want to just go ahead like this, copy it all around edges. Then you can select, oops, so let's go back. Then I like to select all of these like this that, go to copy and then we can copy it down here. Now select it again, go to copy and here go to the endpoint and then you can copy it along these parts. Now this is a bit, just a bit tricky along the edges but once we get uh, the edges done or pretty much there, uh, the, the rest of it is really simple. So let's go, let's just go like this. It's a bit tricky to select uh, because you, you want to select wide around it. I don't know why, but that's just how this family works. Anyways, there we go. So we have the ones that are going all around. So now let's select this one and go to array. Now for this array, you want to go to move to second. Usually it would go to move to last, but in this case, let's go to move to second. And then for number, let's just leave it at two for now. So let's just copy it like this, just a linear array. And then you count the number of these uh, segments that you have. So there's one, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You type in here seven, and there you go, you have your array. Then you select the whole uh, array. As you can see, it's a bit difficult to select. There we go, I think this is the whole array. And now you array that uh, just vertically. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here vertically. So you just go move to second and then you move it to the second one. And then here for the array, let's type in seven. And there we go, we have our raised flooring. And now if we go into 3D, this is what that looks like. So we have those little pedestals that are uh, basically transferring the weight from our raised floor all the way down to our slab or our concrete slab, which is down here. And there you go, job done. So that's basically how you do these raised floors. Now, these raised floors, this uh, this project that they've just created, as well as a few more families for these raised floors, will be included uh, on my Patreon post for this tutorial, so check it out, first a link in the description. Also there, if you want some of those advanced Balkan architect courses, I'm doing a course series right now on office buildings, I'm up to part two, and I'm basically showing you how to go from basically nothing all the way to complete project documentation for a and office building within Revit and uh, that's the topic of this week's course. So if you want that, first link in the description. Okay, so that covers this tutorial. I hope it was useful. I hope you, uh, you find it useful and you use it in your everyday work and I'll be back just uh, in a few days with another Balkan Architect tutorial. Now if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below this video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day!